Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel. We are today inside the F40 and this episode starts a new chapter in the game. We're updated to update 1.38 and with that we start the Le Mans grind. Effectively over the last 10-12 weeks we've been working over the last few updates on a way of earning money in a, in a new and different way. Everybody does the grind but does everybody enjoy the grind? That's what we're trying to change and that's what we're trying to bring something new to the channel we're trying to take you through a grinding process where you can earn money and collect cars it's also a demonstration of the type of cars you can buy and use to take part in these competitions so the f40 an iconic car only comes up in the legend shop every once in a while so with the type of race we've got at le mans this is sports cars gr4s maybe gr3s but we're going to try and avoid them we're going to try and bring your lesser known sometimes much loved and sometimes under a rock kind of car the car that you wouldn't use but then occasionally like today we're going to take an absolute icon of the game and see where it can go so let's go and take a look at its setup so this one is a target of 700 p for the pp for the race the f40 comes in with its standard engine just at 561 brake horsepower Racing hard tyres to try and give us as much PP to play with. But with that, suspension on normal, everything default, you can't change it anyway. The default customisable fully diff the fully customizable differential, we've changed that to 555. So if you're new to the game, new to the series, new to the channel, you'll find that this car can be quite twitchy at the back end, especially in this race where it's rainy. So... Something we started to employ in the last grind is the 555 setting. You'll find it's a little bit slower to accelerate, but it's much, much easier to control and you won't get that mid-corner kick out from the rear axle. So I trust you to try it, and if you need to change it to something more suitable to yourself, please do so. We have a front wing, front splitter, side skirts, no rear aero, but we have the rear wing. Tires and wheels, they're just a normal size type wheels, and they're not widened. We don't have wide body either. So your front downforce is tuned up to get to the 700 pp, that's at 196. The rear is all of it at 400. The ECU is fully customizable, set to 100. There's no restrictions. I haven't even bought the power restrictor and the ballast. Transmission is normal. It says top speed zero, but believe me, it's set there, okay? No turbocharger. We've got the air cleaner, silencer and exhaust manifold all set to racing. We've got the brake system at racing with brake pads. Then we've got the increased body rigidity. Let's go and take a look at the track and the race. For those of you that don't know where Le Mans is, it's in France, so we go to Europe. And it's the 24 hours du Mans racing circuit. It is the World Touring Car 700 with a maximum reward of 550,000 credits, which actually equate to something like 825,000 with the clean race bonus. And here's the breakdown of the race. It's a 30-minute race, so you're going to have to mm, hold on to that break time requirement. You won't get time you'll ha between the hour and the 30 minutes to get a pee in, I'm afraid. So it's 30 minutes or more because you've got a target to finish before the 30 minutes if you want to get out. However, fuel and consumption and tyre wear is at 6 and 10. We're using fully raced tyres and there might be a requirement to use the wets or intermediates where it rains. It doesn't always rain though, folks. There we go. Rival cars are the GR4s as we discussed. And it's bopped with shortcut penalty on heavy, light mechanical damage, but there's no wall penalties. So here we are at the circuit and let's just discuss what we've got to do. It's a 30 minute race, so we're going to go all the way to the 30 and then complete the lap that we're on. If we're good enough, we can get to just before the start line and nudge it over, but we'll have to see where that happens. The race itself, there's the prizes. There's the grid, settings for the race, assists. Trash control one, default ABS, that's every game, every time I race this game, that's the setting. But then we'll have ASM on and counter seer assistant strong. If you're new to the process, we're only using the assist to make it easy. It's a grind. We're making it as easy as possible. You don't want to be crashing, smashing, bashing, and then find out you've not won the credits. Every time you come to the track, you want to be able to win. And we need to allow 
the opportunity to win in the rain. Every race has got to be won, so that's why we're using the assists. It doesn't make you weak, enfeeble, or inferior. They are there to help you. So, we're going to try and hit this with a two-stop. We're going to stop on the third lap and the sixth lap. We are never going to change tyres if it doesn't rain. If it rains to any degree, we might consider going IMs, but we need the laps, they need the tyres to last three laps. So let's see where we go. Here we go then, folks. Fuel map to six. We need to make this fuel lap to last to lap three. I'm struggling with my words already. Happy days. See if we can get up the inside of Mr. Bishop. No, he's not going to let us. Let's do it again at this corner. Nope, he cuts us off, which he's entitled to do. first complex now I'll start talking that wasn't particularly friendly so we're gonna make a way past all the traffic once we've concentrated and got going if you've never driven this circuit before it's gonna take you a couple of goes to get used to it learn where braking points are learn where the best overtaking points are but with that being the case we're gonna break at the telegraph pole just here We've got a dry circuit you've got ample room to break and get up behind the cars in front so you can set them up coming out the corner just gonna hold Mr. Hizal in his place as we tickle past Mr. Mangiano we're looking to the head of field Mr. Portilla leads Mr. Blazan leads they're swapping the lead about we are 10.1 seconds behind the lead breaking for this chicane here this is the chicane version of the track, which is the usual 24 hour layout. I know some people find this circuit extremely boring. That's understandable. It has a long circuit, it has a long straight. And this is the tightest race to get to in with an ample two races in in an hour with an ample break time for us older gentlemen. We need those breaks. Just have to sup less gents. We're into eighth place. We're just making progress past Mr. Mendoza, past the Lexus. A little bit of a tap. Chase Mr. Yamanaka down in the Supra. Break a little bit early as the tarmac changes. Break down as third gear, then second. Really get into the corner. Don't run into the gravel. Break at the second Gantt sign. There it is. First gear for this corner. And then we're going to accelerate out. Now, you will find the 555 tune on the diff makes you quite slow at acceleration. But there's a reason for that. We're going to need that when it rains. if we can uh, just surprise Mr. Yamanaka with a splish past before we get into this corner. There we have it. The hard tyres are just going to catch and take us round. Just need to be on the brakes for the weight change. A bit fine on the uh, approach there. Just slid across those kerbs. Just. No penalty I wouldn't have thought. Second gear to check the car into the corner up to the back of Mr. Healy they've gone off a bit quicker so end of the first lap it's starting to cloud up a bit still beautiful blue skies let's um, go to the rain map now we know we've got definitely got the fuel to get us to the end of lap 3 which isn't the hard bit, the hard bit is coming up in a minute. 
tried to get down the inside of Mr. Healy, but it didn't work. Now there's a technique we've talked about in previous videos which is the start restart 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 function unfortunately it doesn't work that well here at uh, Le Mans because the rain and the, the order of the race it isn't really important until lap three so there's no way off the start you can restart this to um, to give you that advantage that you do at some of the races so we've just got to deal with what happens when it happens and if you're in a race where there's no rain, that is just how it's going to be. In terms of making the right choices, that's all about timing. And that's all about the speed of the car, getting you round to the pits at the right time to make the choice at the right time. So let's not overly worry about that in the early part of the race. You've just got to concentrate on chasing these guys and getting to them, putting them behind you and then concentrating on the next phase of the race. So. We're just less than two seconds behind now as we just got up the inside. Perfect opportunity past Mr. Portilla. Mr. Kewen is normally closer to the front than this, so Mr. Blasen in the rather delightful Suzuki Swift is giving us the run for the money, and here comes the rain. Little darling. Du, 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 du. Oh, it's here comes the sun, isn't it? I apologize, got that wrong. But for those that do notice me singing a bit, that's just your little intro. And we're not doing it's raining men either. All raindrops keep falling on my head, I'm not having that. So the question is, is do we pit on lap two? Or do we pit lap three? Where's the rain going to be? How heavy is it going to be? Are we doing the right thing? Are we going to take inters? Are we going to take wets? The rain at the moment, visible on the radar, is the lightest possible rain you can get. With the odd dot here and the odd dot there. Here a dot, there a dot, everywhere a dot, dot. Old mate, yeah, we know that one anyways. Sometimes the rubbish just falls out of my mouth and it, it, somebody described it as waffle and that's what it is, yes. It might annoy some people, I apologise. But it's just what comes out as I'm racing. That's what my brain thinks about. It's amazing what rubbish goes in and out of your brain. You should be concentrating. I think I'm going lap three. I don't really think this rain cloud is going to give us much drama. I can see some heavy blue stuff in it though, but I don't think it's coming near the track. Just depends on which direction the rain's going to go. We're going lap three, sod it. We'll just have to deal with what comes. It might be the wrong decision, but I've never seen this sort of cloud formation before, so let's push on. Mr. Blazan's gone in. It'll be interesting to see what tyres he does take. I remember doing this race back when I just got the game. I was using the Tomahawk back then, before it was nerfed, and it was a tremendously difficult car to drive, but it was exceptionally quick, and when you got it right, you got it right. The other car that was quick round here was the Red Bull. We're not going to bring in the Red Bull round here. We're just skirting round this rain. We're not actually getting any, are we? Let's hope we can just keep out of it until we get round to the pit stop, and then we can make another choice.
We will be lucky. We'll be very fortunate to have a rain where we, a, a race where we don't get rain or have to change tyres. We will be extremely lucky if the decision can be that easy. But the rain isn't coming over the track at all. It might be just attacking the track now, and it might just get a little wet. It'll definitely be hitting the southwest corner now, I would have thought. As we go through the Sheck and Chicane, we are 14 seconds in the lead, and it looks like there's evidence of water on the track. It looks like we've had rain, but there's no significant depth. Fastest lap of the race is ours. 409219 and I did see a purple sector a few seconds ago we're definitely into the rain now I'm going to break just before we hit the white line don't stray too far to the left folks if you do you will get a penalty it looks like we're doing absolutely tip top here we're into the rain but it's not tremendous so these slicks are working very very well question is we've got to make a choice at the end of this lap which tyre we're going to whether we're going to choose the inters or whether we're going to stay on the slicks are we in a position to make that choice there is some heavy rain further into the cloud the radar is telling us only 16 seconds in the lead so changing to the wrong tyre is going to be critical we're just heading to heading a bit further south into the rain now but we're driving north away from the cloud so it should take us further out pick up a penalty there or two don't know we've got to pit and at this point there's nothing to tell me I should be taking wet tyres I'm going to carry on with what we've got I can't see any colour in the cloud there's a little bit of disturbance in the bottom right hand corner but I don't know I'm going to stick with the slicks I think as he absolutely punts the pit lane wall which is bad form. We're not changing tyres. That's a bit bit naughty. So 17 minutes 30 seconds. Eighteen seconds in the lead. We've made a F40 shaped dent in the end of the pit lane tyres. Mr. Portillas with us, Mr. Healy, Mr. Yamanaka, Mr. Tapai. Who's going to go past? Everybody else is in the pits. Are we making the right choice by not changing tyres? Mr Haywood's coming along through the field. He's now gone in front of us. There he goes, we can hear him. We're coming out in front of him though. Yes, we do. He's behind us. We are heading further down into the rain, but I can't see anything significant. So, let's not worry about the rain. Let's just co concentrate on keeping ahead of Mr. Haywood. We got a penalty there, which is a shame. I just strayed off to the right. You just got to be careful not to transgress over those white lines. And it looks like the end of the rain is coming. It looks like we're doing fine. It looks like we might have made the right choice. And we've just got to pray for a drying line.
So three seconds in the lead as we about to encounter a little bit of spotty rain, one would suggest. If we got some rain, I'd um, explain to you and talk to you about the uh, water depth gauge down there. But we haven't got significant enough rain to, um, to discuss that factor. It might be a different race we talk about that then. So halfway around the track, let's just check where we are on fuel. 2.8, we're good. But that needed to be 2.5, so there's no need to push on at this point. We're still in the wet portion. Looks like we might get a little bit of a heavier sprinkle any moment. Gonna break early, just tap it down to fourth, roll it round the corner as the tarmac changes colour down to second. This is where we're going to shed our half second penalty. And the rain's coming, so bottom left hand corner then, you can see that water depth gauge, there's a little white flash appeared to the left of the car shaped body with the four tyre markers. So when that water level gets above the first line, that's when the wet tyres are, are now needed. Intermediates are the preferred tyre when it gets above that marker. Oh, there's a second band of rain coming. Can you see that after this dry portion, there's a second band of rain appearing, which um, fills me full of dread. So I guess that's going to be harder. And are we going to do a whole lap in that time? It looks like there's heavy rain in there. Are we going to try and do a lap? Yeah, come on, let's risk it for a biscuit. There's nothing that uh, taking a bit of a challenge on doesn't, doesn't hurt. See if we can get a lap in. And then we'll be taking just two laps of fuel. Yes, it looks to contain some heavier rain, doesn't it? Nobody's actually on the wets yet, so are these guys going to take them? I don't think they will. I don't think anybody is on the wet tyres as there looks to be a bit of a dry line appearing now. Nice and smooth through there, brings up the purple sector. The sun's out now, we can feel it, it's getting warmer. That's just me with a bit of a sweat on. We are 30 seconds in the lead in front of Mr. Portilla. So let's hope that that cloud that we can see in the bottom right hand corner of the screen actually decides it doesn't want to settle down and it wants to go away or thin out and burn up in this heat. That's what we need. I don't know if we're going to actually have a problem with that rain cloud now, looking at how that's developing. I guess this is a patient waiting game just to see how it's going to pan out and see if see if we can just wait on and see what happens. The threat of heavy rain is there, but whether it's actually going to manifest in heavy rain, we don't know. lap five there's no rain on the track surface it seems it seems dry might 
this is usually the place where we pick up the wet track but it looks like we're going to skirt straight around this oh this is quite nervous this this is oh. if we skirt just around to the bottom portion of that we're going to be good it looks to oh, it looks like we're actually going into the rain again just taking a little turn hasn't it Yeah, that rain's really backing off. Really backing off. So, we're not going to pit this lap, it seems. Let's try and catch the front end as it slides wide. We did all right. The F40 is such a good car that it... It really can handle anything you throw at it. I thought it was going to throw me off the track there and say, well, there, handle that, but it didn't, did it? So this will be the last lap. Let's just flick through. There we go, 1.5 laps left, which will mean we can get into the final pit stop and we're just going to stop for half a lap of fuel to get us to the end of lap seven. Four eleven, not as quick as that lap, but we have been being a bit cagey for the rain. That rain definitely looks to run out now. Just getting a little bit of a rain dash. Just a bit of a, a farewell rain splash, just to say, hey, come on, this is what we were doing. This is what I came for. Purple sector, Mr. McEwen's gone to the pits. We are 41 seconds in the lead. So by my reckoning, the Le Mans grind is actually the least repeating race in the field of grinds because you do, it is the longer race because it's actually 30 minutes so unless you can time that final lap so that you get it done before the 30 minutes so you just roll over the barrier and start the race again you're going to be rolling on for a little bit extra maybe two minutes 32 minutes we're 44 seconds in the lead and that is the end of that rain that rain is now scamping on it's disappearing over the horizon it is on its way the helicopter's back it's been given the all clear to fly we're still purple but we're pitting in this lap. We won't be. Uh, we won't be making a purple hotty fast lap. Forty-seven seconds in the lead. We should see our bank balance grow unless an absolute clap of thunder comes and changes things. This should be an assured victory. The car itself is absolutely tipped up. You can't argue with it. It does everything it says on the tin. You could try and run it on a higher fuel map. Try and do the two laps. Try and three stop it. That's up to you. That's what the AI will be doing when we race it in the final race. I won't be using this car. 
So we're going to do about 20 races with demonstration cars and we're going to put them into a final custom race where we'll bring another car and we will race all 20 variations of the cars we've run. Here's the chopper back to watch us through as we go in into on our in lap. We will try and compete with a new car, lap car number 21, to um, try and demonstrate another car that's capable of doing this race. So we aim to finish this grind with something in the region of 30 million credits. I know I said that last time, but we spent the best part of 40 million credits on cars, I think. So here we go then, diving into the pit lane. Let's see if we can get it better. There's no rain on the horizon. Here we go, we just made it. We're not changing tyres. We are just taking 1.2 laps of fuel. 4 minutes 21 seconds remaining. We are going to make this the seventh lap, the final one. There's only three or four cars out in the pit lane now. We are some 53 seconds in the lead. So we should be in and gone before they come round. How much damage is she showing? Just a little bit on the front right wing. Oh, we took way too much fuel, but happy days. Let's get it on and gone. We can actually, because of that fuel, we can actually crank this up. Let's see if we can handle some top speed e, um, F40. Gearing will be slightly different with the power. But let's see if we can show you the capability of this car in one lap as we just take it round. Let's go. So Mr Haywood 36 seconds behind us as we open her up. We were doing like 187 on the last time around here but we're going to accelerate well past that. Will we hit the 200? There she is. Just use first gear to check the car through there. Two hundred mile per hour, absolute stunner. Will we get two hundred mile an hour again? I don't think so. I think we'll have to break before that happens. Yeah, we were going to try it, but we ran out of bottle. I want to complete the race. That's what I do want to do. Don't want to be impaled in the end of a tyre wall. So 41 seconds in the lead. Is that the only point on the circuit where we'll hit 200? See if we can do it here. There's a hundred already. Forty four seconds in the lead. One ninety. Now we're going to have to break. Track looks and feels greasy, so we just need to be aware of that. 55 seconds left. What we don't want to be in the world of is putting in lap number eight. We don't want to do lap number eight. Doing lap number eight is counterintuitive to doing the grind. That will put us closer to 40 minutes for the race, so 30 seconds 
less than 30 seconds to go. Fifteen seconds. I think we're timing this just right. Eight seconds we have. We've timed it absolutely spot on to be as close to the end of the 30 minutes as we can. The 30 minutes has just finished there. We're going to be some 10 seconds over. And here we go through the line. And there you have it. First, the first grind is done and out of the way. And that's your introduction to the grinds at Le Mans with an absolutely stunning car. I'd like to know your opinions. There it was, 30 minutes, 15 seconds. Mr. Hayward was some 55 seconds behind, rounded up. We didn't get anywhere to near to lapping anybody, but Mr. Lopez, 2 minutes, 40 seconds behind us. Fastest lap of the race was a 4.09219 our lap two. And what do we win? 825,000 credits with the clean race bonus. Pops us over that 10 million. So that's where we start. 10 million, folks. 207 miles in for the day. And there she is. I'd love to know your thoughts and feelings. If you've got any suggestions for cars, remember the categories we want to use. A bit road car, not necessarily race car, maybe an icon, maybe a classic. Let me know your thoughts and ideas. I'd love to know what you think about the F40. And we'll see you on the next one. All the best, folks. Take care.